Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try so hi Chad, um, we're here with uh, Medium 7 Research and um, you've just uh, participated in a, a reading with Chris Stiller. How are you doing? Okay, great. So first I'm just going to um, ask you a couple of questions about how you uh, felt prior to the reading and I have a number of questions for you and if you could just be as candid uh, as possible, okay? So again, you participated in uh, Medium 7 research and this was uh, an experiment for non-believers, but specifically, could you tell us a little bit about how you, what your perspective on this mediumship was prior to coming here today for this experiment? Straightforward, I thought it was bullshit. Okay. And, and what exactly does bullshit mean? <laughs> just, <laughs> just so I can, just so I make sure I understand what you mean by that. Thought I didn't believe in it at all. Just thought it was lies and a, a money scam. Okay. Whatever, right? Okay. So, and also, just um, again, for the public's perspective, um, what kinds of things uh, did you think Chris might do then today that would have been BS? What kinds of things would he tell you that you... I really didn't, don't know. I didn't really put that much thought into it, so... Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to just ask you a couple of questions um, uh, about your reading. I mean, just the, the overall uh, impression. What was the overall impression you had um, during or after your reading? Amazing. Amazing. Okay. Uh, I don't have any other words. Okay. But I'm still speechless from it, so. Yeah, yeah. I and, much, and I'm in shock still. Okay, and I guess just to help put, put this in context for people who would be viewing this is of course your reading was only just about an hour ago, so you're still digesting right. some information. I think I also uh, got a little bit ahead of myself and I just wanted to uh, clarify something. Did you know me before the research? Absolutely not. No. And um, did you know Chris Absolutely. before the, the research? And it was a totally uh, independent person who asked you to yes. do this? Okay, and so we've never spoken before, and did Chris have any information about you beforehand? No. because no, in fact, I didn't know your name until today. So just to set that context, okay. So specifically, I'm going to go over a couple of things um, that I, I, I noted um, uh, occurred in the reading, and just be honest about uh, um, your perceptions and your thinking, and perhaps, again, clarify for us, because there was no feedback during your, um, how you, how you, um, experience some of these things. So first of all, um, I think one of the key things uh, that Chris picked up initially was that you, y there was a male found um, deceased um, and it felt to him like it was in a basement. Could you elaborate a bit on that for us? Based on I'm not quite sure where that came into frame. Okay. I have an idea but I'm not, I can't totally put my finger on it. Okay. And he was found dead on the side of the road, so... Okay, someone was found dead on the side of the road that, that you knew? Yes. Okay. And could you explain to us who that is, or... Because uh, Chris, by the way, did say it was a male. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He was my best friend slash brother. Okay. And, and when did that happen? About a month, four or five weeks ago. Four or five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, prior to coming here, did you have any expectation that your friend could, could show yeah. up? Okay. Not whatsoever. <laughs> Tell us a little bit, okay, uh, about what kinds of things uh, Chris shared that made you realize that this was actually your friend that just recently passed. Almost everything you touched on. Okay. Could you, could you elaborate for us? Um... I guess the biggest one, I guess you guys already know, is the pickles thing. Okay. Um, that's what sent me over the edge because, like I've already said, it was he eat like a thousand of them a day. Like it was just pickles with him. Like he wanted to go to every pickle barrel restaurant. Like he loved pickles. Um, <clears throat> the red, his favorite hockey team is Detroit Red Wings. We had the same shirts on and a picture. There's just. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. everything you touched on. And if I could ask you a little bit about the red, um, it was interesting, I, rem I recall during the reading, you, you, that one, you weren't relating to it no, not at really all, really but I remember Chris was quite persistent um, with that, but uh, again, you stepped away mm -hmm. and, it, and then what happened? Did you reflect on it or, or just came to you? That's the first thing when people say red, your first thought on it to anyone is mostly blood and stuff like that, right? Okay. So when you step back and get, get rid of that thought, then it just hit me right away. Okay. I'd also like to touch on the, 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 the phrase that was used, donkey dick. I, <laughs> can I say this on camera? <laughs> we could potentially edit things out. Okay. <laughs> say as much as you can, yeah. I, there's no other way to be other than blunt about it. Um, Get that on camera. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, and, and how would, is it just something that uh, you felt it, why would he bring that forward? I couldn't tell you. Okay. But, but for, for you, that kind of specific, you know, that kind of specificity, the fact that the medium was able to share uh, that, that specific concept. Is a specific detail for him to let Chris know to let me know, like, yeah. I guess, right? Like, specific detail. Are you That's shocked about... Sh beyond shocked. Beyond shocked, that, yeah. that, because you never before this point thought that someone could, could, no. could provide that no. level of detail to make you, you believe that. Never. <laughs> okay. Was there anything else about the, um, your, your friend coming that m meant something to you? So, obviously, we call this in the research, just that's, that's validation. That's validation that there is someone on the other side. Um, however, was there anything that you will take away from this and, and, and perhaps it will benefit your well-being perhaps as you move forward? Is there anything from that communication from your friend if you could elaborate? It's an eye-opener. Okay. But a, a calming eye opener. Okay. I'm, to this day, I have haven't had any kind of what's the, I don't know the word I'm looking for. Okay. Um, okay. Closure. Okay. And after today is be my closure day to me. Like I'm completely calm and yeah. Other than shocked and stunned, what I just you know went through, but. So you, you feel that that today, just what was shared, that that brings closure. Closure in what way that. I just don't want to make any assumptions of what I'm thinking about closure. Closure that he's okay. That he's okay. He's up there. He's. He's. Know, he seems to be having a good time. He, that's him. <laughs> there was not a minute of the day he did not have a smile on his face, or cursing, or swearing, or having a beer, or anything. So it, that was his personality. When he, the way he was describing his personality, was beyond like. Okay. You couldn't just guess someone's personality the way he was yeah. describing. You couldn't Google that either. So no, even even if no he had information, you couldn't Google. Yeah, we don't. Like yeah, you just okay. Use donkey dick stuff like that. Like it. Yeah, you just couldn't. And, and he was a joker the way he was. Yeah, yeah because he could see that coming through in the yeah. reading. I probably still small shaving cream in my shoes from the guy. Like he was a jokester. <laughs> okay, now um, there were some things I want to go through. Some of the things that um, again. Um, uh, the, uh, and I believe that it was him coming through for most of the reading, but again, we'd have to analyze it more closely. Um, Chris talked about an impact that was really close, could have ended the life. Was there something, was there an impact that was really close that could have ended this life for you? Mm. Yeah, uh, the only one that came to my mind was just, I don't know, about two and a half, three weeks ago. Mm. Uh, we were going down the highway at work in our work truck, and the tire blew off, literally the rim, the tire, everything in the middle of the highway. And we were just lucky that the tire didn't go off another way, and we didn't lose control or flip the truck, and like we had a load of wood and everything else on Okay. that could have been a heck of a lot worse and literally was like we were it was freaky like it just everything happened the right way not to you know okay die. <laughs> okay now so you could relate to it now again i i can't recall who necessarily said this or gave the information to chris 
Um, how does getting that information, what does that mean to you when you get information like that? I wish I had the answer for you right now. <laughs> in, other words, I, in other words, does that have more validation for you? Oh, totally. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because not a lot of us, I mean, I haven't had any Coast Life calls. I'm in my mm -hmm. 40s and I haven't had any, so that doesn't relate to me. And there were, so it's not necessarily a generalized comment, okay. Mm -hmm. There was another one that I think that came up with you that I'm interested and curious about as well. Carrying the casket, it didn't come up more, it came up more than once. Can you, did you carry the casket for your friend? No. Okay, so the carrying I the casket it didn't relate, to, yeah, and it's funny, it came up, it came up a, a, a couple times, but that was one that you couldn't relate to. No. Okay. One I can't. And I guess when we do the cross uh, interview with, um, with, uh, with Chris, um, it'll be interesting to, to get a bit more um, clarification because I noticed in some of the readings some questions about your friend came up. He was here with some of the other readings. He seems to have a strong spirit, perhaps. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, another uh, issue um, about the premonition that was given to you in relation to now, again, because you've talked about getting so much validation and I, I, I could feel it and I could see it coming through in your reading. You got a premonition about you're going to get a house. Like, you know what? I was kind of jealous. I have to be honest with you. <laughs> I want a medium to tell me that. But anyway, um, can you elaborate on that? In other words, tell us, where are you in, in relation to house? We don't know. Do you have an apartment? You, do you already have a house? Like, what did that mean for you? Actually, it was very shocking because in the past, say, few weeks, me and my other half have been talking about buying a house and have connections and getting a house and financed and all that kind of stuff. And I always just, we've been talking about it and I have the attitude, you know, forget it. Like, it's not going to happen. Just stop uh, fucking talking about it, you know, type thing. Yeah. And, yeah, and I just sort of brush it off. And, but that's when we've been talking about it a lot lately. Okay. So. And so what was interesting, and I recall this in your reading, um, was that the, and again, I don't know if this was your friend who was speaking, but I just know Chris did share this, is that he said, stop worrying and analyzing about how you're going to get the house. We're telling you you're going to get the house, which, do you see that as some guidance for you? In other words, um, some, some hope or a way of behaving um, in, in, in your future? Uh, I do now. <laughs> I don't know how, but... Yeah. Okay, so do you feel that information has given you some hope? Yes. Okay. Complete hope. Okay, okay. Is there anything that you, um, else that you, you would like to um, ask?